A retired police officer who became an inspiration has passed away. The government says it will open up more Crown land to municipalities. And more evacuations due to raging wildfires. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A local hero has passed away. Retired Constable Craig Town died on Wednesday night at age 65. Town joined the Thunder Bay Police Force in 1989, but it was his recovery from a tragic shooting in the line of duty two years later that caused him to become an inspiration. Mike Lang has been following his story and he joins us live in the studio. Mike. Thanks, Ryan. Town, he was shot in the neck and shoulder in that 1991 incident at the Balmoral Police Station. Town miraculously survived but became a quadriplegic, but nevertheless, the injured constable was still able to live out the rest of his life as a loving family man and an active member of the community. The flags are flying at half-mast outside of the Thunder Bay Police Headquarters for Craig Town, the man who survived bullets after a dangerous suspect grabbed the gun out of Town's holster and shot the officer twice. I hated him, but after talking with my wife and discussing the whole situation, I realized that hating wasn't hurting anyone but me. Town eventually forgave his perpetrator, Donovan Miller, for taking away the use of his arms and legs while sparing his life, a life Town lived for another 32 years, where he remained an official member of the Thunder Bay Police Service until his recent retirement. Town took part in events such as the police parade and was honored with his 30 years of service bar this past February. No doubt about the fact that I love Thunder Bay. It's uh, been great to me before I was injured and it's been phenomenal to me after my injury. There's no other, I don't think there's another city in Canada that could have supported it. Mayor Ken Boshkov has known Town well over the past three decades or more and has long considered him an inspirational hero for the way he dealt with what happened to him in that 1991 incident. Not only was he a loving person, uh, but demonstrating that kind of uh, courage, poise, uh, dignity, and uh, appreciation for, for life. But he was blessed with a great family and lots of friends who cared about him. And I know that his colleagues from the force always included him. Town received the same amount of love that he gave to his family and community. He was looked after by his wife Jillian and received 24-hour nursing through disability coverage. Craig Town was 65 years old. Mike Lang, TBT News. Ontario's Natural Resources and Forestry Minister says the province will soon make more Crown land available for municipalities to purchase through the creation of a new task force. Graydon Smith made the announcement at today's Thunder Bay Chamber of Commerce Leaders Luncheon. The Ford government is still dealing with the fallout of its decision to open up Southern Ontario's Green Belt to private development. But Smith says this new avenue will only be available to municipalities. When the North thrives, Ontario thrives. Minister Graydon Smith says his government is creating a new Crown Land Task Team to facilitate the sale of Crown Land for housing or other economic opportunities. Smith, speaking at the latest Chamber of Commerce Leaders Luncheon, insists this will help speed development and unlock vital revenue streams for Northern communities. So here in Northern Ontario, there's a lot of Crown Land. Some of it is within municipal boundaries of you know existing communities, but uh, uh, they need access to it for their communities to grow. So what we want to create through this task team is a streamlined process so these communities for housing economic development can get access to the purchase of this crown land faster and this task team will help provide a lot of resources that they need to step through those you know many parts of the process so trying to streamline it for them trying to provide some capacity for them to help get through the process quickly so communities in the north can keep growing and expanding the news was met with approval by the area business leaders in attendance chamber president charla robinson believes this will help alleviate some concerns here in the northwest 
Yeah, certainly uh, the availability of Crown land has been something that's been an ongoing concern. So really, really great to hear that the government has listened to the municipalities that have raised those concerns um, and is now putting in place uh, a system to try to simplify those processes. And so we'll be watching to see what comes out of that committee and uh, what improvements can be made. And uh, hopefully that will help to address some of the concerns that have been raised for a number of years. Smith says additional land should be made available through the new Crown Land Task Team next year. Ontario is sending crew and equipment to the Northwest Territories to help battle the wildfires raging there. Those fires have forced thousands of people to evacuate the city of Yellowknife. Siobhan Morris has the latest on the effort to lend a hand. This is what firefighters in the Northwest Territories are up against. Flames eating through forest. A red glow creeping closer to the capital of Yellowknife. Its streets deserted after its more than 20,000 residents cleared out. Ontario is sending help to keep the flames back. 65 personnel, including firefighters, command and support staff, some of them landing today. Hoses and hose bags, pump kits and batteries for radios. If we don't get these guys more gear to defend that city, it's going to be pretty catastrophic what happens there. Charity Global Medic is sending help of its own. One thing they really need is more fire trucks. Well, it's really hard to make a fire truck appear except for units like this. A thousand liter water tank and pump system, a little bigger than a washing machine that can be used to snuff out fire. Because it fits on the back of a pickup truck, and there's a lot of pickup trucks in Yellowknife, we're able to turn any one of those pickup trucks into a fire truck. One unit's being flown to Yellowknife from Toronto, the other on its way from Edmonton. It'll arrive Friday night, it's gonna be given to the fire chief, it'll be put onto one of their pickups and it'll be now a forward unit. The Red Cross is lending a hand in Alberta. That's where many evacuees have wound up, having left the familiar and comfortable behind. The Red Cross is connecting people with shelter, pillows, blankets and toiletries while they wait to find out if they can go home. And that was Siobhan Morris reporting and we'll have more on the Northwestern Ontario wild, wildfires later on in the news hour. A decision by Alterna Savings to close its Ignace branch on September 15th is being met with concern from the community. It's the only financial institution left in Ignace and the nearest bank is 100 kilometers away in Dryden. Carl Lagden spoke with interim mayor Kim Bagri about the closure and brings us more in this report. The township of Ignace's interim mayor, Kim Bagri, was shocked by a recent phone call with Alterna Savings, which has announced plans to close their branch in Ignace without first consulting the community. Very disappointed in them because they never uh, gave us any notice, really. They just called um, probably two weeks before people got their letters and uh, said, this is what's happening. Alterna justified the closure by citing issues maintaining adequate levels of staffing and low investment interest. But Bagri, whose council has given her the task of finding a solution, says she has made attempts to offer the bank incentives to stay, including offers from former employees willing to come out of retirement to staff the bank. The township has also offered to provide funding to train new employees and even space within their municipal building to offset expenses. I have heard uh, the odd comment, you know, what is council doing for us? Well, you know what? We are not sitting back not doing anything for them. We are fighting for this community. And now we're going to take it up a step. We are going to um, go to the board of directors. Bagri has been left pleading with Alterna as the only other option left for the residents of Ignace who need to deposit cash is to drive over 100 kilometers to the nearest physical bank branch in Dryden. At the top of the list of those who will face difficulties if the community loses Alterna are local business owners who routinely make cash deposits and would incur multiple hours of time lost each time they need to make a deposit. Local business owners we spoke to were clearly distraught, describing the situation as a nightmare. Give us a year. Give us a year. Let the community prove to you that we can keep this bank open. In a statement put out by the township this week, council stated that they're also exploring mitigating solutions in the event Alterna does go ahead and closes the branch. Carl Langdon, TBT News. As Northwestern Ontario continues to see more accidents and fatalities on area highways, local MPP Lise Bourgeois wants to see 24-hour truck inspection stations and better road safety initiatives. 
Bourgeois believes that recent transport collisions in our region are mainly caused by the lack of driver training, and not just during the winter months. She feels the trucking company should also be held more accountable for accidents. While the construction of a new inspection station east of the city is soon to be complete, the NDP member for Thunder Bay Superior North says the truck inspections won't be done cons if truck inspections won't be done consistently if the station ends up being understaffed. And so we've got a brand new inspection station coming open maybe sometime this month or in September. Fantastic. But then the release says they're only going to staff it as needed. Well, what does that mean? Those stations need to be staffed, if not 24-7, for substantial amounts of time. The new inspection station started construction in October of 2021. The MTO hasn't confirmed when the $30 million project will be completed and ready for big truck inspections. The Muskeg Express is back on the tracks and ready to charm riders once again at Centennial Park. The popular ride is set to reopen tomorrow morning. The train derailed last month for the second time in three years when an issue with one of the newly installed wheels caused it to slip off the track in the middle of a ride. Thankfully, the passenger car wasn't impacted and none of the riders were injured. The necessary repairs have now been made and the train has been inspected by the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. The Muskeg Express will once again run from 11 to 4, Wednesday through Sunday. It will also be open on Labor Day, Monday, September 4th, for its final day of the season. Two sisters from Thunder Bay have teamed up to produce a horror film inspired by their summers at the lake. Lempo is currently being filmed at the family camp in the Lappy area. Holden Dougal has the story. Tina and Laura Lynn Petrick still spend their summers together at the family camp on one island lake. Now it's the setting for their horror film, Lempo. I wanted to write a story that was uniquely Thunder Bay. And the idea that popped into my mind immediately was a bunch of friends sitting around in a sauna drinking crystal beer. Writer and producer Tina explains that she wanted to write something based on her Finnish heritage. Well, Lempo, once upon a time in Finnish pagan, um, history, occultism, legend, he was considered the um, god of fertility and love. However, his image was warped once um, Christianity took over Finland. He was warped into the devil himself. Director Laura Lynn is pulling out the Super 8 camera to bring a vintage look to some of her flashback scenes. I will be very inspired by uh, 70s and 80s thrillers as well as slashers and there will be some elements of Scandinavian cinema like Bergman. The film is set in 2004, which is the era special to the sisters as they were growing up. We have always kind of messed around and made work together, so this is uh, just doing the real thing. Uh, it's pretty exciting, and it's definitely bringing us really close, and it feels feels really special. Action! They surpassed the crowdfunding goal of $10,000, which will be mainly going towards paying cast and crew, equipment, and supplies. We were immensely successful with that thanks to all of the local support that we've been given. The people of Thunder Bay have been so amazing to us, have really got excited about the project, and um, we couldn't do this film without them. Once they're finished production, they'll be editing till Halloween. Then after that, they'll be submitting films to film festivals. Hole and Dougal, TVT News. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, I think he wins the best stand-up of the yeah, year. Yeah, Holden getting into it there, getting into the spirit. <laughs> awesome. Can't wait to see the movie. Oh, absolutely, me too. <laughs> well, turning to weather now, Mitch, it was a beautiful day out there, and it seems like that temperature is going to kind of continue throughout the weekend. Yeah, I think the temperature was doing better than Holden at the end of that <laughs> video. It was beautiful outside today. It started a little bit cooler, making its way up to 24, and with all the winds we saw yesterday starting to dissipate here in Thunder Bay, only reaching up to 22 kilometers from the northwest, was gust to 30 kilometers, so that wind has made its way out of Thunder Bay. It is still affecting part of the region. We did see plenty of sunshine throughout the day. Now, not a lot of talk about in the region as similar conditions throughout in Thunder Bay. Plenty of sunshine moving out to Fort Francis at 24 with fairly clear skies expected tonight. While farther in the northwest, 
from Red Lake. A little bit warmer, sitting around seasonal at 25 with clouds in the area. Expecting a little bit more cloud coverage tonight, but fairly nice as well as we head farther northeast to Armstrong and Greenstone at 25 and 23 with plenty of sunshine in the area. While Marathon a little bit cooler down to 17 and 18 in Sault Ste. Marie. Also seeing plenty of clear skies and those conditions continuing tonight. Now in Thunder Bay, it's going to drop down to around 13 tonight. Clear to partly cloudy, so a little bit of clouds making their way in. The wind is going to pick up just a little bit from the southeast, 9 to 28 kilometers an hour. But pretty much a nice day, a nice night, and even nicer conditions on the weekend. I'll have those details in just a bit. Okay, thanks a lot, Mitch. Well, when we return, we'll have more on the wildfires in the Northwest Territories that have forced thousands of people to evacuate the city of Yellowknife. That's after the break. Don't go anywhere. Fire, frustrated. <laughs> My whole family's already gone.